Hello everybody and welcome to the first ever live version of Renewable English. Today we are going to be talking all about electricity consumption and the home. But before we do that, I'm going to tell you a few things about what Renewable English is. So Renewable English is an extra course to bring you some positive information on all of the different units you'd get in your usual textbook. So for example, at the moment, we're looking at the home. We're going to look at our electricity consumption at home. So that's just a general idea of what we're going to do. Now, you can find us here on YouTube, which you may well have done already. You can also follow us on the socials. There's our Instagram and our Facebook page. So please feel free, join us, send us your ideas and get involved with the conversation about sustainability. So without further ado, let's look at some of the important vocabulary that we're going to need for this lesson and going off into the future. Now I'm sure you know what these are already, but let's just make sure. If you'd like, there's a worksheet. Look in the description box below. You can go there and download it. It's got all of the questions and all of the definitions you could need for today's class. So the first one, climate change. Feel free to write whatever you want in the chat box. I'm here checking it out, don't worry about that. Climate change is something we're all concerned about and it's something that we all need to make positive steps to make a difference to. But what is climate change exactly? Well, it's a change in the global or regional climate patterns. So it's getting hotter, for example. I know here in Spain, it seems to be getting hotter every single year. Fossil fuels, the next one. What are they? Any idea? I think most of us know what fossil fuels are, don't we? They're the things that we use to create energy in a lot of instances. Things like oil and coal. And these things, they're not renewable. They're called fossils because they come from years and years and years ago. Millions of years ago. The next one is our carbon footprint. Now, I'm sure you've heard this said many, many, many times before. But what is your carbon footprint? What's my carbon footprint? And how can we make it smaller? So, our carbon footprint is the amount of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere as a result of the activities of a person or an organisation or a community. So every time you switch on a light, your carbon footprint is getting a bit bigger. Every time you drive your car or you go in the car, your footprint's getting a bit bigger. And we want to look at some of the ways that we can reduce that right here at home. So here's some other vocabulary. Consumption, up there, consumption. What could consumption be? Well, it's the action of using up resources. So in this case, we're talking about electricity consumption. We're talking about using electricity at home. And things that don't consume as much are things that are energy efficient. Energy efficient. Now it's a strange looking word and it sounds energy efficient. Now these are things that use relatively little energy to power their needs. So nowadays you can see the sticker that has A+, A++++ on fridges, 
on microwaves and all these different things. Now, the more energy efficient they are, the less electricity that they use. And the last one there, we can see just under here. Hello there, everybody. I can see Valeria said hello. Nice to see you. So uh, green or renewable energy, something I'm a really big fan of. Now, I've got solar panels on my roof and they heat the water in our house because solar energy is a renewable energy. I'll tell you what, I'd like to have some more solar panels on my roof, but they're really, really expensive. And I guess that's one of the big problems with renewable energy for us as individuals is that initial outlay, the first time that we have to get those, those solar panels up there on our roof. So I've got a question for you. You can see here a picture at a, a local shop. and I'd like to know how many different electrical appliances you can think of. I'm going to give you, oh, I think I'm going to give you 52 seconds. No, 48 seconds. I've got my clock here that my nanny gave me. So I want to see how many different electrical appliances you can think of and just chuck them there in the chat box. Don't be shy. I'm going to start us off here with a fridge. What else can you think of? We've got a kettle. Excellent. We'll be speaking more about those in a while. So far we've got a fridge and a kettle. Can you think of anything else? If you've got your worksheet, you can write it on your worksheet. There we go, thanks John. In there with fridge. A strange word, fridge. It's got a D in it, but refrigerator doesn't. English can be really crazy sometimes. Washing machine. Thank you very much, Kids Can School. Oven as well. Very good. Brilliant. So I'm going to move on to the next page and I'm going to see... There you go, Alban. Thank you. A TV. Is that everybody's favourite electrical appliance? Or maybe this one might be. I'm trying to keep it as far away as possible. Excellent there, right on cue, fantastic. Microwave as well, that's brilliant. So let's see if we can say what these are. I think most of them have been mentioned. One of them, this one, is my least favorite appliance. I hate this. <sighs> So we've got very good there. We've got we've got two of the answers in there already. So what was this one? I can see somebody's mentioned it. I really don't like this thing. For me, it's a waste of electricity and it's a waste of time. As you can see from this shirt, it hasn't been ironed in a very long time. Good. So somebody's jumped in there with a kettle. What's over there? Over there. Oh, there it is. I'm getting confused. <laughs> Very good, Alban, fantastic. It is an iron, iron. Be really careful with the pronunciation of that one. It's got a silent R, iron. Iron and ironing, yes. Ironing is my least favorite chore. I do not like ironing. So, we've got an obvious one there, the smartphone or a phone, which we can see charging. And of course, somebody mentioned it before. It was a kids, uh, kids can school out there in Italy. Hi there, guys. Thanks for joining us. It is an oven. Again, a strange pronunciation for that word. It's not oven, it's oven. Uh, oven. Um, and that is, in fact, 
my oven. Um, and in that moment, we were roasting some delicious vegetables because I love roasted vegetables. Now, what about the wattage? What about the wattage? The wattage is the electricity that each one of these uses. Now we can see some numbers here at the bottom of the screen. We've got, there we go, 2,200 to 2,300 watts per hour, okay, per hour. 2,000 to 2,200 watts per hour. 1,100 watts per hour and 2.5 watts per hour. Now, you have to bear in mind that obviously you're charging your smartphone, maybe you're charging it for more than an hour. Um, you're cooking something in the oven, again, it might be more than an hour. But your kettle, is that gonna be on for more than an hour? I don't think so, but it does use a lot of electricity suddenly, what we call a surge. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. And the last one over there, the iron. Now, if you're in my house, we wouldn't be using it for more than an hour, that's for sure. But again, heating it up uses a lot of electricity. So, do you think you can have a guess in the chat box there? How many watts do we think an iron uses per hour? How many watts do we think an iron uses per hour? Feel free. Go on, Jimmy, have a guess. You guessed on microwave before, really good. I use my microwave less and less nowadays. So what do we think this kettle? No, kettle? What are you talking about, Harry? You said iron. The iron. Hmm. Look at that, Alban, straight in there, bam. 1,100 watts, Alban. I would take my hat off to you, but I never take my hat off, so I'll tip my hat to you. Very good, Alban, incredible. 1,100 watts per hour used by your iron. Kids can score gets 2,000 to 220. It's close. And if you're using it for a couple of hours, it would definitely use that many. So which do we think, what do we think about the smartphone when we're charging a smartphone? How much electricity does that use every hour? Hmm. Hmm. When I'm thinking, I like to comb my beard. Hmm. Excellent. I'm afraid I can't pronounce your name. Um, I'm not great at reading Greek just yet, but I'm going to learn. Um, very, very good. Everyone who's guessed that, absolutely fantastic. It doesn't use a lot of electricity. And also nowadays with fast charging, it can be charged in an hour anyway. And of course you can use your, your battery packs as well. So when you're thinking about wasting electricity, there are other areas you can focus on, but again, you don't need to overcharge your phone. It doesn't need to be on for the whole night. Maybe charge it for a while before you go to bed and then unplug it. It is a lovely beard comb, thank you. So what about this one, the kettle? I'm getting confused with my sides here. The kettle, what about this? How much do we think there? Oh, somebody's come in there with 2,000 to 2,200. Anything else, what do we think? Okay, so I'm gonna reveal. Oh my goodness, 2,200 to 2,300 watts per hour for a kettle? That's terrible! That's so much electricity! What about if we heat it on the hob maybe with gas? I don't know. It's an awful lot of electricity. So one thing we can do here is 
limit how much we use our kettle and a really good tip that my granddad gave me was always measure out the water that you put into the kettle because that way you save water and you save electricity because you're not boiling this whole kettle full of water and it takes ages. If you want a cup of tea, just heat enough water for a cup of tea. And so the last one, let's have a look. 2000 to 2200 watts. Now, we're gonna to need to use our ovens. Maybe less now it's coming to the summer and we can have more salads and stuff like that, but we are going to need to use it. One little tip here, when you have to preheat your oven, look out for the red light and as soon as it changes as soon as it's the right temperature in put your food in close it straight away the longer you leave it open the more heat's going to come out and you have to heat it again and things will take longer to cook so you have to go in and out nice and quickly one thing my wife and i do and my wife is an incredible cook uh, but I'm an excellent helper in the kitchen. I'm very good at opening the oven and closing it when she puts something in. So if you're cooking with a partner, that can really help. Now, you may hear from my accent that I'm British. What do British people love more than anything? Well, it's a nice cup of tea. So we're gonna talk about the kettle effect. What's the kettle effect, Harry? Great question, guys. The kettle effect is something that comes about when people in Britain get nervous about something and they rush off and they put the kettle on. Now that's something my mum always used to say to me when she got home from work. Put the kettle on, love, which Translated means, make me a cup of tea, please, Harry. But put the kettle on, and when you do that, psh, there's a big surge of electricity. And suddenly, loads of electricity is being used all at once. So we're going to have a quick look here at the kettle effect. Um, I did have a sound, but then I realised this isn't what an electric kettle would sound like. So... I decided to take it out. Um, so there we have our kettle um, and the kettle effect, obviously. But I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to show you this graph. Oh, I've given you the answers. <gasps> Were you aware? So this is a graph of three events that happened in the UK that made British people think, I need a cup of tea. I've got to get one right now. Um, British people, we drink tea to celebrate, we drink tea when we're stressed, we drink tea, basically, we drink tea for everything. So, let's have a look at what the options are. We've got Kate and William's Royal Wedding in 2011. We've got England versus Australia in that glorious night, uh, the Rugby World Cup final. Now, bear in mind, this was in the middle of the night when this happened, because it was in Australia in 2003. And that ever so painful night, my earliest memory of football, to be honest, uh, when England lost against West Germany, now Germany, in the Football World Cup semi-final at Italian 90. Um, have a look there at the different options and which one do you think was the 640,000 kettles? So which one created the fewest number of people to run off and hit that button? What do you think? Which one stressed the British people out the least? I'm keeping an eye on the chat box, don't you worry. I'll tell you what, my dog doesn't seem to want a cup of tea. I'll let you have a look at her. She's just in the corner sleeping. 
So what do we think? So we think the least was Italian 90. Thank you, Alban. Any other guesses? The royal wedding, says Michael. I wasn't there for that, I'm afraid. Although they got an extra day's holiday, which I don't think's fair. There we go. So a few people have guessed the first one is the royal wedding. What about the next one? What do you think? What could it be? I'll reveal the answers in just a moment. I should have music for this. Next Thursday's lesson, there's going to be music. Instead, I'll put the music in for you. Okay, now I'm going to reveal the answers. Now, some of you might be a little surprised. So let's get rid of that. There we go. It was, Michael was correct, and the rugby was second as well. Fantastic, Michael, and kids can school. Absolutely brilliant. You guys have nailed it. You are absolutely correct. They are, in fact, the correct answers. So, the last one there, as we can see, the, the kettle effect of 1.12 million people turning the kettle on, that's like everybody in Cyprus going and switching the kettle on at the same time. Can you imagine that? The whole of the nation of Cyprus putting the kettle on? That's insane! I guess they don't like tea as much as we do. So, the next step, I'm going to ask you a few true or false questions, but first, I'm going to show you a video called Unfun Facts. Okay, and that's the lovely sound there, and here we go. 18% of global emissions come from operating our homes. Our demand for electricity is increasing by 3% every year. In the average house, we can have up to eight appliances on standby. 56% of the consumption at home is due to cooling and heating our houses. So there you go. Now for some questions. All you're going to need to do in the chat box is put a T or an F, I guess. So the first one, are you ready? 14% of total CO2 emissions come from operating our houses. True or false? Oh, my apologies, the audio was very low. I'll make sure to turn that one up then in future. Um, if you like, I can flick it on again. Oh, we've got a false there. It is false. Um, it's actually 18%. My apologies, kids can school. Um, the correct answer is 18%. Now, all of these unfun facts can be seen on our Instagram page. I post them every Wednesday. So the day before the class, you can get ahead of the game. Um, very good, John, as well. Excellent. Very good. All of you absolutely correct. Let's give it a sound here. It is incorrect, of course. The next one. Our demand for electricity or for energy grows by 3% every year. Every year, 3%. I wish my wages went up 3% every year. Hmm. What do we think? Is that true or false? Excellent. It is. Very good. We've got some people right in there straight away. Oh, wrong one. Beautiful sound. Um, the next one. Now check this one I want you to check out when you get home today. At any one time in the average household, there are three appliances left on standby. There are three appliances left on standby. Now remember, when they're on standby, they use as much electricity as when they're turned on. So, three appliances left on standby. What do we think? Do 
do do do do do do it spoils straight away very good oh there are in fact can anyone remember hmm i'm trying to think of my house i tend not to but sometimes i leave the tv on it is in fact eight remember turn your tv off at night turn your computer off Maybe don't leave it charging. Just a few things you can do. Now, the good thing is you're saving electricity, but you're also saving money. Um, and the last one I'm going to say is, ah, okay. Uh, it was eight, very good. 56% um, of the energy we use is for heating and cooling our houses. 56%. Is that true or false? True or false? It's true. Very good. Very good. So I'm going to move on. Now I'm wary that because this is the first class, I'm going to go a bit over the half an hour, but I'd love to have a quick look. Very good, Michael. Well done. Uh, I'm going to have a quick look now at some numbers. Now, we often hear a lot of Big numbers. You know, we hear about football players. Oh, he cost £120 million. Pounds, or we often hear about a lot of big numbers. Now, I want to break these big numbers down for you. One million. If I counted one million seconds, I'd be here for 11 days. One million seconds. Okay, that's not that much. Mm, that's cool. If I counted for a billion seconds, I'd be here for over 31 years. So if I'd started counting, I would have been six. So I would have started counting back at the 1990 World Cup to get to a billion to be here now. So just think about that for a moment. And 10 billion seconds is about 317 years. So if any of you guys can count to, to 10 billion, then you're going to be the oldest people on the planet. So with those numbers in mind, think about the amount of time that is, how long that is. Let's think about the emission side of things. We're going to have a look at a table in a minute about global emissions across the globe. But I wanted you to have those numbers in your head first. So if I make one barbecue, I will create 500 grams of CO2 emissions. Yes, that's me. You can see I was at a smart, casual barbecue. Smart, casual. I don't think I got the memo. So to create one tonne of emissions, it would take 2,000 barbecues. 2,000 barbecues for one ton. So let's have a quick look at the table of polluters here. Now please bear in mind that these are the, the biggest polluters in the world. The, these are seven of the top ten biggest polluters in the world. And we can see there that China produces over 10 billion tonnes of emissions. They are also the biggest investors in renewable energy. So one thing about energy consumption is it wouldn't be that bad if we used more renewable energy sources because fossil fuels emit huge amounts of CO2 emissions. Now, if we were using more um, renewable energies, then we would create less. So if you do have solar panels on your roof, you don't need to feel as guilty about using your uh, air conditioning because you've created that electricity in a clean, green way. However, most countries don't, I'm afraid. So if I wanted to create 10 billion metric tons of CO2 emissions, it would take me and 1,999 friends, I can assure you, 
I do not have that many friends. It would take me and all those guys 317 years or until the year 2338 burning one barbecue every second without sleeping, without eating. That's how long it would take us to make one year's worth of the emissions that they make in, in China. Or 160 years to make as many as they have in the USA. Basically, a really long time. Um, yeah, they are the biggest barbecuers, I completely agree. Um, so next up, I'm gonna ask you a few questions and see if you can chuck the answers into the question box there. I'm also, because this is my first class, if it's okay, I'm going to take a quick selfie because this has been so good. I've really enjoyed having you guys here. It's been fantastic. We've got some top tips in just a moment and then a planet promise. But here are your questions and I'm going to take a quick selfie. I'm just going to tidy up the mess. Quick selfie with you guys. Oh. Look at me using unnecessary lights. Not really okay, although if they weren't turned on, you wouldn't be able to see this beautiful beard. Um, so, according to my calculations, how long would it take me and my 1,999 friends to burn 10 billion tonnes of CO2? What do you think? Can you remember? How long would it take? Do, 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 do. I need to have a time limit on this, don't I? Again, always learning, I have to say. Ooh, 312, very close. I think if we burnt bigger barbecues, we could do it in that amount of time. Really close there, Alban. You're five years off the other way. Um, 317 years, kids can school. Pat on the back for you guys. Um, next up, what do you think about which country is the biggest emitter of CO2? Do you remember the 21st night of September? Yeah. <laughs> Bad math. It's okay. It took me quite a while to figure it out. So, which country? What do we think? China, Alban, straight in there. But again, as I said, they're also the biggest investors in renewable energy. The two countries which have the largest populations. Everyone's smashing that answer there. Brilliant. Really good. Absolutely fantastic. The two countries with the biggest populations. Stop singing, Harry. What do we think? Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, we've got Russia and Bangladesh. There we go. China and India. Hi there, Juan. Lovely of you to join us. Juan is one of my ex-students and a fantastic one at that. Brilliant. China and India, the largest population. And uh, we've got in there, Rife Ken has jumped in there at the end with the correct answer for the last one. The most emissions per person is the USA. Now, I'm going to hand you over to, I think this is my favorite part of the lesson, um, and it's something that you guys can join in on too. I'm gonna to hand over to my favorite top tipper. Well done to everybody with your answers. Don't forget to like and subscribe, of course. I'm going to hand over to my favourite top tipper and here are some ideas on how you can reduce your electricity consumption. Hey guys, turn off unnecessary lights. Unplug unused electronics. Thank you very much.
So there you go. There are some top tips. Now, what I would love for you guys to do, get on Insta, make a list of some top tips, or by all means, send me an email as well. Um, I'm gonna, here again, here are the socials for you again. Feel free to add me on Insta, send over some ideas, uh, of course. Um, you've got the link here on YouTube. Um, of course, you can check out our website as well. You can go there. All of the live streams are going to be on there. And all of the videos of the uploaded classes are going to be there too. Uh, now, the last thing I'm going to do today is make a planet promise. Ooh, where have I gone? Here I am. I'm going to make a planet... I'm going to make a planet promise. I, Harry Waters, promise to turn off all of the lights when I leave the room and not leave my computer on standby at night because I know there is no planet B. So if you guys want to make a planet promise, that would be great. Please do. Oh, double me. That's confusing. Let's turn that guy off. It would be great if you guys could make a planet promise. Chuck it on Instagram. Um, send me an email. Put your videos on, on Instagram as well. Hashtag Renewable English so I can see all of the work that you've done. And of course, if you want, feel free to, to chuck in a donation and buy me a coffee at coffee.com. This is a completely free course. All of the materials are on the website. So please do go over to the website for, for all of the materials. Um, it is completely free, but anything you can put in there to help would be great. Um, because I want to keep this free as possible. I don't want it to be sold to advertisers as well. Um, and it would be great uh, if I could keep it that way. So, all I have now is to say thank you very much for joining me. Um, I hope to see you again next week. Um, thanks very much. It's been wonderful. Thanks to all of you. I think we had 31 people at one point today, which is great for the first lesson. Stay tuned for some really exciting news because there's a project that's coming up very soon that I think you'll all be super interested in. So... Stay tuned for that one. But that's it from me now. Time for me to leave. I need to get a, another fancy listen to the jingle. See you guys later. Don't forget, subscribe, uh, tag us on Instagram, and I'll see you next week.